Hi guys, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA and I'm obsessed with ChatGPT and I love accounting and I'm a big time QuickBooks user. So it only made sense to make this video where I'm actually going to compare ChatGPT with QuickBooks Online. Now, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense because ChatGPT is not an accounting software. It's an AI chat software and QuickBooks Online is an accounting software. So how am I going to compare these two? So let me tell you what the experiment is. So I have a QuickBooks Online file and I duplicated it. I have two versions of the QuickBooks Online file and I only have income. So I went in and I loaded a bunch of invoices into it and there's absolutely no expenses. There's ju just income in there. And then I'm going to take a bunch of expenses that I downloaded from uh, my credit card, from my credit card statement. There's about 200 lines of expenses here. And I'm going to load them onto QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to have QuickBooks Online automatically categorize these things for me. I'm not even going to think about it. Whatever QuickBooks tells me they, uh, they are, I'm going to categorize it and accept it as is. Then I'm going to look how good QuickBooks Online did with its ca categorization. And then uh, as a second experiment to kind of compare the two is I'm actually going to take these expenses, load them into ChatGPT, ask ChatGPT what they should be, and then categorize them in QuickBooks based on how ChatGPT tells me to do it. And then we're going to compare head to head to see who was better at categorizing expenses that were downloaded from the bank. Okay, let's load up these uh, transactions. I'm gonna go to bookkeeping, then I'm gonna click on transactions, and let's say I already have a, a credit card there, created Visa 9988 that doesn't have any uh, transactions in there. I'm gonna click on the drop down menu and click on upload from file, then uh, drag and drop the, the file in there or you know select it from my, um, from my computer. Click on continue, select the account that we're going to connect it to. So we already created a credit card account uh, prior to starting this video, just to speed up the process. And we'll create, select here the date format, and then we select the column for the amount, hit uh, continue. I'm going to click on select all, and then go all the way down and click on continue, and yes. And we'll let that import. Perfect. So all my transactions have been loaded. Um, uh, QuickBooks might walk me through the process of reviewing the categories, which is what I want. I want, we're comparing, right? So I want QuickBooks to suggest stuff and I want to accept whatever QuickBooks says, which is this one right here. So then once the transactions are all loaded, I'm just going to accept everything. I'm going to click on select all, click on confirm, and we're going to accept all of them exactly uh, sort of the same way as a QuickBooks initially suggest I should categorize them. I didn't even pay any attention to whether or not these things are uh, suggesting uh, correct categories or not. Again, I am 100% trusting that the initial category that QuickBooks is giving me or suggesting me is going to be the accurate one. So when, once this is done, we're going to X out and we're going to pull up a profit and loss so we can see exactly what this looks like. So first thing I could tell you right off the bat, uh, and let me just do all dates here. That, that way we're, we're, we're comparing apples to apples here. So first of all, one of the main issues we see here is that we see uh, some of the uh, transactions that I've entered. Uh, they, they were coming in as a negative sale, so as a, like a refund. And I'm going to click on that to see what that is. And essentially, uh, QuickBooks, for some reason, uh, recognized some of my credit card charges as a sale. I don't know why. I don't know like where the logic is. And of course, because there were expenditures, because there's money coming out of my bank or money being charged on my credit card, they're negative income. So obviously, that is all super way off. Um, and I really don't know what to do at this point, but this is what, what it gave me. So we're going to uh, click back here for a second. And then we're going to see all the other expenses that were um, categorized to. I guarantee you that with the exception of that sales, most of these are probably going to be uh, okay. Let me just look at a big one here, like uh, office expense. I'll click on that and we'll kind of just inspect that. And look here, this is a uh, coffee place. This, I'm not sure what this is. Maybe a restaurant of some sort. And then we have BP, which is, that's actually um, a gasoline for a vehicle. So that's weird that that categorized that as uh, office expense. BLN Monday, that's monday.com. That's a software. Okay, that's fine. Office expense. Then we have, this is actually a restaurant, so that shouldn't be um, office expense. 
progressive that's actually insurance uh let's say we have a money thumb that's software that's good uh voice g i don't know what this is but uh it's probably office expense uh pastora that's actually um a provider for my uniforms so that's uh yeah that case that could be office expense and dell and best buy so some of this stuff is right i mean bp was way off and uh beirut which is a restaurant was way off let's look at everything else here then we have just lady i don't know what that is uh well i guess we'll try to figure that one out um and then we have calendly okay slack that's right foreign transaction fee that should probably go in into some other category then we have uh this is software this is software so that's not that's good so far mm, indeed okay i guess that could be papa john's definitely not office expense uh quartino that sounds like a restaurant definitely not office expense uh oh liquor store <laughs> not an office expense um so it's pretty good i i you know Look, it's it's a computer. It's software. You know, I I don't have uh, deeper expectations. But this is exactly what you, what you expect when you have software automate some of this stuff for you. Okay. So now we get a general idea. I'm actually going to put that one away. We, we, we can go back to that. And then I have uh, identical version of this of this company here. We'll do all dates again and click on report. And I have the same exact thing. The ninety four thousand dollars when I did all dates. I didn't have no expenses. And now for this, I'm gonna take an entirely different approach. I'm just, I'm not gonna just have QuickBooks uh, categorize it for me. I'm gonna categorize it based on what ChatGPT is telling me to do. So let's get to that. Okay, let me get out of QuickBooks. Let me get into ChatGPT. I'm gonna make this screen a little bit smaller here, just so I can bring my CSV file, my Excel file. I'm going to put it here to the right hand side uh, that way we can kind of follow along exactly what is happening as we do this stuff in um, in real time. So let me put this in uh, zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit easier uh, to work with and I am going to um, prime uh, ChatGPT and I'm going to tell it exactly um, how to go about doing the categorization. So the first thing is I'm going to tell it what I am, who I am. So I'm going to say, uh, I have a small business marketing consulting company in Miami, Florida. Okay, so I started telling it just really basic uh, context for ChatGPT to kind of get an idea for what I am. And then I'm going to say, I am going to give you a list of transactions with a date, description, and amount. And I'll put here uh, negatives are credit card credits or refunds. Yep. And uh, positives are charges or expenses. Okay. Uh, all of these are um, expenditures for my business. I'm gonna press enter, and I'm just kinda, I'm just giving it context. Okay, so right now it's just starting to uh, just kind of respond back and saying, yeah, okay, I'm I'm getting what you're what you're doing. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my actual uh, chart of accounts from QuickBooks because I have to give it uh, this context. So I'm gonna go into uh, chart of accounts over here and I'm going to export my chart of accounts as is. So I'm going to go to run report and I'm going to export this in Excel. Okay and uh, we're going to clean up this uh, Excel a little bit so it's a little bit more manageable. One of the challenges that we have with QuickBooks is it exports a lot of additional crap that we don't need. So we're just gonna clean this up. And I am just going to include the income and expense accounts. Uh, and the reason for that is because um, I'm telling it that it's all expenditures. I mean, I am gonna keep the income accounts though, because uh, to be fair, uh, when QuickBooks did the, the, uh, the suggestions, it suggested some sales accounts, which I was completely 
uh, hit this agreement on anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and, and do the entire uh, profit and loss chart of accounts, and I'm going to paste it into ChatGPT, and I'm going to tell it what. So um, now I am going to give you my chart of accounts that uh, contains contains account name and type and this needs to be the entire context for the work i'm really bad at spelling of course work you are going to do okay so we'll clean this up here and i'm gonna paste that in there and press enter okay so i'm I'm feeding it context. I'm feeding it context, feeding it context. So, okay, boom. Okay, so now I'm going to say, uh, when I send you my transaction list, you are going to give me a table with um, date, payee, amount, and category from chart of accounts chart of accounts if you are not sure use the best possible guess based on the limited context ready question mark okay it's ready all right perfect so let's go in here and let's grab these so what i'm gonna do i'll let's let me get started by just sorting these it just might be um, a lot easier to just um, sort it by date so you kind of follow along um, so we're gonna i'm gonna grab i'm gonna try to not grab too many so i'm gonna grab a hundred at a time i think it's just it might be better to just grab a hundred so i'm gonna grab up to the hundred here and then click on copy and then i'm gonna come in here and click on paste and press enter so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. So it's gonna go through the process of uh, reorganizing it uh, for me in the exact um, table format I gave it. So I just kind of reiterated what is it that it's going to do for me, okay? So we'll let it do its thing. And I'm gonna uh, stop the video and, and resume it when it's done with the list. Now, as of the date of this video, ChatGPT 4 is still kind of slow compared to the older versions of ChatGPT, but ChatGPT 4 is the one that I'm using and the one that I tend to trust the most. It went through um, a whole bunch of them, not, not all 100. It's, I would have to hit continue and let it just keep going to do that. But I'm going to show you what I've done so far so you kind of get an idea. I went ahead and I, and I copy and pasted the same chart from uh from chat gpt i just basically selected the entire uh, chart like this i hit a uh, copy and then i paste it back in here and just kind of follow along just to make sure uh this is all working and i'm just going to delete these for now and just keep those uh, categories in there so i kind of see where i'm going so i'm going to come back here and say um continue but just give me the categories uh, forget the other, um, I'll say forget the date and amount. Amount. Press enter. So now it's going to go a little faster because it's going to give me less information because I really don't need it to give me, you know, sort of the same exact information that I was already getting. So by now narrowing the amount of information that I get, since what I was trying to do is to copy and paste anyway, uh, this is going to go a lot faster. So when this is done, I'll come back and we'll do some more. Okay, so as you notice, it, it kept going, it kept giving me some more, and I went in there and I kept pasting it in my uh, spreadsheet. So basically, I am just building the, the categorization that ChatGPT is giving me, and I'm gonna complete the entire uh, sheet, all 250 transactions, and then I'm gonna load them into QuickBooks. So let's continue with that. Okay, so it, uh, it finished, and to be honest, that took about 10 to 15 minutes to just completely uh, generate all those things. So I've been uh, just basically copying and pasting into the spreadsheet. 
so I have the master spreadsheet prior to importing into into QuickBooks. So I'm just gonna just make sure that the top one here is uh, Panchito, and then where is my spreadsheet? Where, where did it go? Right there. Paste that in there, and then I'm gonna delete all of these things and left. Okay, so now I have a spreadsheet in which um, I use via copy and paste. Very clunky, I know. <laughs> you know, pretty soon it won't be this clunky, but I'm just showing you what we have now. So I took the same spreadsheet and I'm actually I actually asked ChatGPT what all these things uh, should be. And again, some of these things could be wrong as well. Um, but we just going to compare the two and kind of see where each of them lie. And this is the idea that I have. I'm actually going to import all of these payees into my vendor list first. So QuickBooks kind of uh, detects those as I bring them in into uh, for categorization. So I'm going to click on the gear menu. I'm going to click on import data. I'm going to click on vendors. Click on browse. Select the, um, the same spreadsheet that I've been working with. And then select my description as my column. And then I'm going to import all of these here um, as they are. Actually, let me go back for a second and make sure there's no um, opening balance date. Just the description, click on next, and then click on import. So basically, I'm force creating those payees into QuickBooks. Now, quick side note, um, you could even tell it to clean that stuff for you. So I can go back and say, um, give me cleaned up uh, versions of the payees. Um, just the company name, remove all unnecessary um, characters, something like that. Okay, we'll check the on spell check, click on send, and then what it would do is ChatGPT uh, can actually clean up the pages for you. Okay, so I'm um, just quick side note uh, again, uh, you could have done that prior. But I just kind of want to show you that for, for simplification's sake, uh, we're going to use the exact same uh, payee that we have um, on, the, on the spreadsheet. Okay, uh, This doesn't allow the colon, I guess, so I'll remove that. Then click on import. Okay, so now when I go into my list of vendors, I should have all the payees loaded in there. Okay, that was a very, very specific reason why I'm doing that. Um, Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column here and I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call it payee uh, and category. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to do a regular Excel function and I'm going to concatenate these two things. So I'm, gonna, I'm bringing in the, the pay name. Whoops. So I'm going to bring in the, the pay name here and then I'm going to put a uh, comma. And then I'm going to put uh, parentheses, space, and I'm going to type category, colon. Like I'm literally going to bring the category as part of the pay name. So we'll see. We'll see how, how that works. I've never even tried this before. So close the parentheses, comma, and then we'll bring in the category as part of that. Let me just put a little hyphen here and then close that. Okay. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm bringing in the entire context into QuickBooks Online before I import it into bank feeds. Let me copy and paste this as values and uh, that should be enough. Okay. And then hit save, close that. Then I'm going to go back into my banking here in this is the other uh, QuickBooks file, the one that doesn't have, let's just look at that again. Uh, so by this point, there's no expenses here. Okay. Let's do all dates here. Uh, there's uh, no expenses, it's just income. So let's go into bookkeeping and let's go into transactions and let's upload the file. Okay, so I'm going to use the exact same technique. Um, so I'm going to use the same banking. I'm not going to import it, although I could use importing software to just do direct import, but I'm, I'm doing it like this just so we can just kind of compare as apples to apples as much as possible and then hit continue. And then I'm just gonna make sure that um, all this stuff is selected correctly. And then I'm gonna say, give me pay and category. And then we have received and spent. So we're just importing 
the same three columns, date, description, but notice how the description now comes with additional text. And I'm hoping that QuickBooks catches that text and gives me better categorization. We'll see. Um, I have no idea this will work. Actually, I've never tried that before. But uh, we were just trying to figure out how do we, how do we merge the two things? Or how do we merge the QuickBooks that we love and the ChatGPT real powerful technology that's, that's out there? So let's see if, 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 if this version of Bank Feeds uh, gives me uh, better categories. So I'm going to skip for now. And now we see a whole bunch of um, uh, categories. And some of these um, could, didn't even catch the categories. But the way we have it set up here, and I'm just going to um, open up this up a little bit and just organize the screen, maybe zoom out a little bit more. Remember, I actually have the categories right there uh, next to me. So when I click on the drop-down menu here, I don't have to pick anything random. This will take uh, longer because there are some categories. And even um, ChatGPT suggested meals and entertainment, which wasn't even in my list of chart of accounts. So it also makes mistakes from, from that perspective. So I'll just kind of maybe, maybe use the best possible judgment. And th this might be a little a cheating here at this point uh, because you know, the very first time I stopped to think about it a little bit and now... Uh, I'm not uh, now. I mean, the first time I didn't, I just hit yes, and now I am. So it's sort of uh, cheating from that perspective, from creating a head-to-head -head comparison. But again, I use the additional information that um, that uh, ChatGPT uh, gave me. Okay, so let's hit confirm, and then we have this one, which should be uh, education, and this is actually suggesting something else completely but I'm gonna pick uh, continuing education. Is there an education category here? Okay, continuing education. So we'll pick continuing education. And again, it's taking me longer because I'm literally reading the category that ChatGPT is giving me. So I hit confirm. Let's go to the next one here. Let's do software and subscriptions. Okay, or do we have something called subscriptions? Okay, so there's membership and subscription. So this was actually a little bit tricky. Again, ChatGPT kind of messed up because th they gave me a category that's not even in my chart of accounts. So at this point, I would have to pick from one of the two. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll stop recording here and I'm going to go down the list and literally pick the best category based on the suggestions that it gives me. And then we'll compare head to head and then discuss whether or not that was even worth it. Um, to spend that extra time doing that. And then what will it look like in the future when these two technologies are merged together? Let me give you an idea more or less what I'm doing is since I'm using the same banking module, but the category that I had ChatGPT write for me is now part of the pay name. I can simply just search. So I'm just going to grab this category here called shopping, which is not even in my chart of accounts. I'll type shop, shopping in, in the search, press enter. And this should only give me those transactions that are under shopping. So I'm going to select all, um, and then I'm going to go to update, and then I'm going to uh, search for Shopping, okay, shopping is not in my chart of accounts. So I'll just create it really quick. Um, I'm creating any new accounts that were not in my chart of accounts originally. I'm creating as an other expense and putting an asterisk. So I remember at the end that I'm, you know, that this wasn't a, a perfect system per se. So I'm just gonna um, uh, apply all those in one shot. So I'm just gonna, as I see them, a category like this one called um, office expenses, copy that, paste, enter that's going to give me all the ones that have office expenses select all of them go to update and then the category is that uh okay office expense a generic office expenses so i'll just throw it there in office supplies and click on apply and confirm so i'm not even looking at the specific vendor so i'm i'm not again cheating but not really cheating you know i'm just I'm trying to use the tools that are at my disposal in um in QuickBooks Online. Okay, all these things are coming under phone service. Go to update, and then do I have phone? 
yeah, I do have phone service. Apply and continue. X out of that. Let's see, we have this called meals. And again, the reason why I'm searching within it is because the category is inside of the pay name because I did this from ChatGPT. So we'll select all and then go to um, update and then we'll put here meals with clients, I guess is the closest thing that we have. Apply to all of these. Let's go to the next one, general business expenses, okay? That's kind of a lazy category, but okay, let's see what, what do we have in here. Okay, that's a whole bunch of things. So select all that, update, and then do we have a general, yeah, there is a general business expenses category. I guess I gotta throw it in there. And then X out of that, okay? Next one is office supplies. I'm just kind of ignoring that error that's in there. I'm trying to go as fast as possible with this stuff. Select all, update, office supplies. There we go. Beautiful. What else I got in here? Government services. Let's see. Go over government services. Select all, update. Do I even have a category like that? I don't. Uh, so let's do like local, like local taxes or something like that. Mm. Uh, it's one of those tough ones where we don't have a category for I'll just, so I'll just create it. Government services. Take that out. Okay, and I'm gonna create that as an other expense. And I have the asterisks there so we can kind of judge um, those new categories that ChatGPT created for me that, they sh that it shouldn't have. I gave it context um, limitations, so I don't know. It's, I don't know why I didn't do it. So we got all these entertainment ones. Select all, update. Do I have entertainment? Yes, I do. That's technically not even a tax deductible category, but again, I'm trying to stay within Watch IGPT as much as possible. I don't know. Okay, so let's go categorize. And then this would be general. General business expenses. Now, for some reason, it's not picking up some of the pay names. We imported the pay name. So if I, you know, if I search the pay name here, I could, I could, I could find it. Although I'm, I'm skipping that for the purposes of just focusing on categorization. But there was a purpose at the beginning uh, for uh, importing those those pays. Let's see this one called gifts, gifts, gifts. Okay, we'll select all that, update, and do I have a gifts category? Yeah, I actually created that one because that one wasn't even in my in my chart of accounts. So X out of that. Let's see what else we have. Oh, we got parking. Let's do parking. Okay, quite a bit. Three parking. Okay, update, and do we have a parking category? Yes, we do. Apply. Perfect. Okay, X out of that. What else we got? We got this thing called taxes. 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 Okay, select all that and go to update. And do I have a taxes category? Uh, taxes paid. I'll take that. I don't, I don't care. Probably should I change that to taxes and licenses. Um, but that's the category it gave me. Let's see advertising. Okay, quite a bit. Select all, update, put this under advertising. Perfect, X out of that. Let's see what else we have. We have category office. That's kind of random, but okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know why office. Uh, I'm just gonna make the executive decision there and put office supplies. Because office by itself is kind of a strange uh, category. Let's see this one called groceries. Um, groceries is technically not a business category. Again, like ChatGPT making up stuff. But we'll do that and put a star, and put uh, groceries. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so again, I'm still, do I'm still trying to respect as much as possible info that ChatGPT is giving me. That way we can have a... Um, a fair comparison. So you got business, 
licenses. Do we have a category for that? Let's see. License LIC. Oh, we do have it. Okay, perfect. That was part of a chart of accounts. So some, some are right. Let's see what else we have. Let's say travel. 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 Bunch of travel. So I select all these. Go to update and pick our generic uh, travel category. Although generally I want to have a sub account for um, you know travel and it should be under something else. But again, I'm just going to follow along uh, kind of the ge generic uh, categories that it's given me. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, so we have auto. Let's see what else we have under auto. Okay, so we have two auto accounts. Let's put here auto. Hmm, that's weird that I don't have an auto account. I should have an auto account. It's the, uh, it's the car, no. Automobile. Or maybe vehicle. Vehicle, oh, vehicle expenses. So I'll put that under that category. Let's see, let's do insurance. Okay, three insurances. Okay, we're down to 23 transactions. We got this thing called general business expenses. Again, not a big fan of uh, that category. Let's go under categorize, and this is general business expenses. Can you do several at the same time? Select all, um, update, and this is a expense, and this is general business expenses. Okay, not a huge fan of that category, but that's what's what's out there. Twelve transactions left. Let's see, um, telephone, only one, update. Or I think it was just called phone. Okay, X out of that. Let's see, accommodation. What in the world is accommodation? Um, we'll put that under travel, hotels. Although accommodation is not really a category, but um, let's see, repairs. And we'll put that under repairs and maintenance. Okay, we got nine transactions left. Let's see, we got this thing called software. Okay, select all those. Update, do we have a software category? Software and apps, we do. Apply. Perfect. Six transactions left. Let's see. Um, okay, conference. Conference and seminars. Select all, update. Do I have a category for conferences? Um, I don't, but I do have education. So yeah, so I am choosing continuing education in there. Again, that's sort of cheating because I used some of my judgment on that. But um, let's see what this is. Printing and reproduction. Do we have Printing and reproduction, printing and photocopying. Okay, that could work. So um, confirm. Next one is Prima Water. Um, do I have water? Yes, I do. Water and sewer. Okay. And last one, internet service or so QuickBooks suggesting software and apps, but I'm gonna choose internet uh, service, internet and TV services, and then hit. Confirm. Okay, there we go. So I used essentially for the most part the suggestions that I imported via ChatGPT. Let's pull up that profit and loss report. Let's do a PL. And let's collapse that. And we'll do all dates and run. And then let me find the other one that I have here on this side. Okay, we'll look at both PLs next to each other. We already saw the the other PL earlier, but again, that's what we're trying to we're trying to figure out. Is it better to have QuickBooks suggest stuff and we just 
take QuickBooks suggestions at face value um, or you know, take exactly what it's suggesting and not even think about it? Or should we um, stop to think about it or use ChatGPT and then use very mild sort of thinking about, um, about it from the categorization process? So let's see, you, you kind of saw the process that we used uh, for both. You know, I'm thinking this is more going to be something that a, that a small business owner would do versus an accountant. Accountants are a different breed of people. You know, we, we, we will, we'll, we'll look at receipts and that, that sort of thing and we'll make our decisions based on multiple factors. We won't just take what the software gives us at face value. So we'll just look at the net income really quick. It's pretty close. Now, why would it be different? Maybe he sent some stuff into the balance sheet. Let me check if it did send some stuff in the balance sheet because that kind of complicates things. And on this one, the one on the right-hand side, that's the one that we used uh, QuickBooks for categorization. And yeah, it took out, it put, it sent some dis some stuff to to a balance sheet like this partner distributions. Let me take a look at that. I don't think it on this one that with the ChatGPT categorization. I don't think it would have sent anything into the balance sheet because I don't remember doing anything into the balance sheet there. Let me see if there's anything here. Nope, no, um, no distribution. So what's, what was interesting, particularly um, about the way QuickBooks did the auto categorization is it made the decision, it took these three transactions, University of Phoenix shopping, um, Duty Free Americas, and Saman Doral. It took these three and decided, okay, this is gonna be a shareholder distribution. Whereas um, on the ChatGPT never suggested anything to be a, a personal expense in nature, a shareholder a distribution. If I would have uh, sent these three things to some sort of category, and I'll, I'll put these on, I'll grab these three here, and let's just, I'm gonna create a category here called uh, personal expenses. And I'm gonna create that and put that as, a, as another expense. That way I get them out of the balance sheet. That way we can just make sure that we're comparing apples to apples here because I'm just, I'm just worried that one of the transactions uh, or two or three in this case um, are skewing up this test. So let's see, send that back into personal expenses. And again, I'm doing that because I want everything on the profit and loss report. I don't want anything, anything on the balance sheet. So let's do... Oh, no, it's personal, personal, personal expenses. And save and close. Okay, cool. All right, so let's, okay, so balance sheet is the same. Um, I, don't, I don't know why this stuff is different. Should be, say, oh, vehicles right here. So we, it also, so another thing that's interesting is, um, on the QuickBooks version it is, it decided to send some expenses into the asset, the vehicle asset. So I, again, we, I kind of took exactly what, um, what, what QuickBooks suggested and I, and I uh, accepted it as is, but this should go into our vehicle expense that's in the profit and loss. Um, vehicle expenses, the profit and loss. And now, now I think we should be on the same page in terms of uh, profitability. Yes, we are. Okay. Now let's go back into our PNL for both of these. Let's go into our profit and loss, and let's go into our profit and loss, and let's do all dates and just collapse this for a second, and then we we'll do all dates and collapse that. Okay, good. So we have a pretty interesting uh, comparison here. So let's, let's, let's start going through the comparison. So my first gripe here would be on the, on the QuickBooks, purely QuickBooks, uh, purely QuickBooks version of the categorization is it sent a bunch of credit card expenses as a negative income. That of the bat, I don't like. Obviously, that's a, a problem with, with uh, the way that QuickBooks did it. Um, let me sort these 
in descending order and then just do both so we can kind of just look at the biggest expenses first. Now, th another interesting thing is that on the on the one that we use ChatGPT with, which is the one um, on the left side, nothing was suggested to use a cost of goods sold a category, whereas um, QuickBooks did have some things that were going straight into cost of goods sold. Let's open that to see what's in there. So this is the stuff that QuickBooks automatically categorizes cost of goods sold. So they categorize this thing called Enterprises Inc., Sufrat LLC, Berlitz Languages, uh, Now House, I don't know what that is, and La Rural. So let me, I'll walk you through what these are. So Enter, Enter, Enterprises Inc., that was actually a car rental. So that's definitely not cost of goods sold. Sufrat is a, it was a restaurant. So it's definitely not cost of goods sold. Berlitz Languages, um, I think I paid to translate some, doc some documents officially. Uh, so that's uh, also not cost of goods sold. Um, this No House Monterey, I actually don't know what this is. Uh, I think this is um, maybe an, I don't know. I actually have no clue what this, what this one is. Um, so that's sitting there in cost of goods sold and La Rural, that's actually a restaurant. So again, not sure, you know, uh, how it came up with those things that went into cost of goods sold. Then we have office expenses. That's our, our, our most uh, generic category. Notice that uh, QuickBooks suggested $8,000 worth into office expenses, whereas ChatGPT put more stuff in there, put you know, $20,000 in, in office expenses. So let's go into office expenses and see what's in there. Okay. So I think that's the stuff that we were looking at earlier. Okay, for the most part, it's good. You know, some stuff not good. Um, like uh, I think it was the liquor, <laughs> right? That should that should be something else. Um, and everything else uh, was pretty good. Let's see what uh, ChatGPT sent to office expenses. Let's see what's on this side. Okay. Um, so similar categories here. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's that, that's coffee. That's software. That's, I don't know what that one is. Um, office, I mean, Home Depot. That probably should be repairs and maintenance. Walmart, that could go either way. Flexport CA. I Actually, I don't know what this is. But uh, it suggested uh, office supplies, I guess. Um, Best Buy, okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so this flexi spot is like, um, looks like it's an in and out. Okay, so that's fine. No big deal. West Elm, okay, that's actually uh, office desk or furniture. So that's not bad. Um, L Publishing, that's going into that uh, f printing and photo, uh, printing, photocopying. Okay, I'm, got, I'm good with that. Uh, Dell into small tools and equipment. I think I made the executive decision to move that one in there because we didn't have anything for Equipment, actually, they were suggesting computer and internet, which we didn't have a category for. Then we have all these things here that are software and apps. This is actually really good. Um, everything here seems like software and app, except for this University of Phoenix thing. That I don't know what that is. Uh, and then we have this is actual coffee, like a coffee shop. That should actually go somewhere else, not into software and apps. Dragonfly is a restaurant, so that should go into... Um, entertainment or meals uh, meals actually um, I don't know what NAM management is okay we'll leave it there uh, let's see yeah everything else here seems right on their software and apps so did, did pretty good ChatGPT did, did pretty well in in this in this category let's see the next one meals okay that's a lot of stuff in restaurants let me go through it see if I recognize all these um, let's see the vast majority of these look like restaurants. This is not restaurant. That's Monday.com. That's actual software. So I got that one wrong. Uh, let's see. Google Domains. That's not meals. <laughs> so ChatGPT got that one wrong. Uh, Fire Max Fire Protection. Okay, no, that's actually like uh, compliance stuff. Security. Security. 
Yeah, a lot of these are restaurants, which is which is okay. But some stuff, some uh, water, coffee, I, I guess that's fine. Uh, Mercedes Benz, that's not meals. That's actually, um, in, uh, in, I guess in this case, I paid 16 bucks for coffee in a Mercedes Benz corporate run. Okay, I, I, I could totally see how that would be that. This fast, I don't know what this is. I think it's, actually, I have no clue what fast is. So, we'll leave it there. Uh, everything else here is restaurants. So good job. It it did a couple. I mean, it did make some mistakes. Um, let's go to. Uh, I think I might just skip general business expenses because that's generally that's a very uh, lazy category. And look, um, QuickBooks actually didn't even use that category too much. It used it for one transaction. Or uh, it could be more than one. Let's open up. Okay, it's a couple of small ones. So it grabbed a couple of small transactions and put in the in the general business category. Whereas um, ChatGPT seemed to be a lot more uh, aggressive at using this category. So it put um, a couple of these things in general business expenses. And again, that's kind of a catch all category. So I'm okay with the things that go in there. Although we have. This thing here for sixty hundred bucks. I really don't know what this is. Um, let's see. We have uh, Martinez. Okay, that's actually food. That Martinez is food. Yeah, Doral. That's liquor. That probably shouldn't go here either. Everything else is kind of okay. Um, continuing education. Yeah, all these things except for square dice, which is. I think it's a restaurant. Um, Smartest USA, Art Institute, Berlitz. Okay, this, this stuff makes a lot more sense on continuing education, so that's pretty good. And then we got some of the softwares as membership and subscription. And then I think this is the one that I categorize manually under uniforms. So I think all, all in all, all in all, my opinion is that I think ChatGPT does a better job in some categories, whereas uh, uh, QuickBooks obviously uh, can also do a better job in other categories. Uh, I think the difference is that QuickBooks won't really use AI to do this. I think what QuickBooks would do is they would use what other uh, QuickBooks users categorize stuff in to then suggest uh, 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 categories or expense um, accounts, whereas in here, ChatGPT used its own knowledge or database or whatever. And then I went in there and I chose the categories based on what ChatGPT uh, gave me. And it also, it created some categories of shopping, gift, groceries, and government services that it wasn't even in my uh, chart of accounts. Sometimes that's a, good, that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. I think in this context, shopping, gift donations, groceries, um, and maybe not government services, but all these seem like they're more personal stuff. So I, I, I do kind of like, you know, identifying it as this weird account first and then probably realizing that it's not a business thing. It's a personal thing. So I do see some value there uh, because ChatGPT never suggested anything to be personal in nature where um, QuickBooks did do suggest some things that are personal in nature. Now, both of these are in the same net income because we manually made sure that all the, all the transactions were expenses and they had the same baseline of, uh, of sales. But all in all, my biggest gripe with uh, QuickBooks would be that, that negative income. Uh, that's, a, that's a big turnoff for me. Um, and, and, uh, and the other uh, piece that I think is worth mentioning is that this uh, two AIs per se, you know, ChatGPT and, uh, and QuickBooks, these two uh, uh, computers, these two machines, these two databases, whatever you want to call it, software packages, both trying to do the same job, which is uh, take away the accountant's judgment and the small business owner's judgment or requirement to have too much judgment by automatically suggesting um, a category. It's going to give you vastly different results based on what tool you use. Uh, of, of course, QuickBooks by itself, you know, 
gave me a result. ChatGPT gave me a result, and it was more manual, and I had to do a lot more work to do it to ChatGPT. Long story short, if you're looking at these two things, and they both give you the exact net income, let's assume that all these expenses are deductible. None of this stuff is personal. If you're a business owner, do you really care? You know, which one is more accurate? Or do you at the end just care that the net income is approximately the same? And I think the right answer is that non-accountants, small business owners, they'll look at this profit and loss report and they'll look at that profit and loss report and it means the same thing to them. So if that's true, then does ChatGPT or QBO categorization, does it really, really need to be accurate or, it, or it, does it just need to be approximately accurate or does it just need to feel like it's accurate? And I, I don't know what the right answer is, but I could tell you after spending a couple of hours doing this, this experiment, there truly is no conclusive um, winner here, okay? The, some things, uh, the software, oh, ChatGPT or QuickBooks online got wrong. I think the goal is going to be when these two things work in tandem, right? When, when uh, QuickBooks suggests something and then also checks it against ChatGPT, and then maybe the mixture of the two can give you even a better suggestion. Or maybe you can ask some contextual questions before, like, what type of business are you? Where are you located? Um, you know, what are the type of expenditures that you normally have that are personal um, in nature? And then maybe after you start giving us some context, and again, that triangulation of the, the context, the chat GPT, uh, artificial intelligence, and the QuickBooks database or metadata of all these users using QuickBooks, that could be a really cool future where these things start looking more like sort of single click, download all your banks, your credit cards, single click PLs ready, and then you tweak it afterwards. So that's going to completely change the way we think about how we go uh, to build financial statements for accounting. See, traditionally, we start from zero and we start loading the transactions in, and then we reconcile the, the banks, and then we uh, tweak the categories, and then we make adjustments, and then we look at the financial statements, and then we go back and tweak some more. And this new process, I think most business owners, the average business owner, is just going to connect their banks, and it's immediately going to produce a P&L and a balance sheet. And then it's going to be up to the user to then decide if they want to tweak from the original version. So what you're seeing here in this exercise is you saw almost like two original versions of automated uh, financial statement uh, creation from the information that's downloaded from the banks. So if you watch this whole thing, if you watch this really long video, um, thank you. And also, what do you think? Uh, put the comments in there. What, what, what about this experiment? What about these two concepts or the clashes of accounting and chat GPT? Uh, excites you, scares you, and what do you think? What do you think the next big thing is going to be in this domain? Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.